<laughs> Genesis 1. And it'd be just a little bit before I'll actually read it, so probably won't have you stand or anything like that. Let me go ahead and turn that on. Genesis 1. Braden asked me the title so that he could put it in the live stream, and I said, Christmas lights, and he said, oh no, I already put the Christmas lights up. I'm not preaching against Christmas lights, that's just the title of the message. Give me a minute to, uh, uh, to develop that, okay? But uh, it's not the first time actually I've preached on that. I, I feel like maybe it was a Sunday school uh, way back. Uh, I don't know. I didn't like find the message. I'm not, this is fresh. Okay. But, uh, uh, but it's, uh, I remember preaching on this, this time of year, probably every year, because what goes through my mind every time, this time of year, Christmas lights and just the feeling that you get with that and all the songs we sing. In fact, a few times, um, that's been kind of the theme of our candlelight service, you know, is Jesus being the light and even the songs that we sang tonight, uh, some of them dealt with that light. Of course, there's the star, uh, that led the wise men and lots of things are associated. Uh, lots of lights, I guess are associated with this time of year and really the whole Christmas season. I don't feel like I'm alone in this room. I think there's some lovers of the Christmas season. Uh, obviously, there are some things about it that we don't like, but overall this time of year, I'm typically filled with joy and kind of some warmth. Some of it's nostalgic, remembering when you're kids or, or my kids when they were younger and different traditions and things that we've done. We just got our Christmas tree uh, the other day, and that's kind of like become a tradition where we just go out, usually a uh, day after Thanksgiving, but this year we had to wait till Monday. And uh, went out and got our, our tree, got to cut it down, and, you know, just like everything else in the world, they make you do it, and then you pay for it, <laughs> just like Walmart, and check yourself out, all right? But, uh, uh, but anyways, it's, it's a lot of fun, and, uh, and, and there's a lot of things about it. Now, again, I, I realize there are people out there that are pagan, and they still celebrate it, but they celebrate it as a holiday, a winter uh, holiday, and they don't... Uh, think about, of course, the Lord or anything like that. And some say, like, yeah, well, Christ Mass, okay, so it's a Catholic holiday, and Baptists shouldn't be, so, you know, there's not that many out there, but there are people out there who have strong stance against uh, Christians celebrating uh, Christmas in this way, and uh, maybe you didn't know, that. maybe you're surprised, but I've met a lot of people that way. Um, and, you know, obviously some hate the commercialism, I can get behind that. Uh, some hate that, well, even to some degree, I don't even mind that. It's just, I mean, there are some, some uh, businesses that their entire year, like their profits are all made in this time of year, and then that just kind of coast the rest of the year until the next year. Uh, but anyway, you know, some people just, they don't care for this time of year for different reasons. Uh, obviously, I'm not a big Santa fan. I've said that before, and I've got reasons for that. Uh, when we got a Christmas tree, they... Um, had a big Santa uh, chair, and I sat down, and Viviana wanted to sit in the chair, so I sat down and put her on my lap. I'm like, if anyone's going to get credit for being Santa Claus, <laughs> I'm going to take credit for it. So anyway, I even got the beard and the guy, <laughs> the, the belly full of jelly. <laughs> so uh, uh, anyway, um, this time of year is, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a, a humbug. I do like Christmas, and I like all these things. Now, when it comes to the Christmas lights, I don't care too much for untangling them and making sure they all work and you always got that one bulb that's out or whatever. And, and, uh, but I got kids now that do it for me, but I do like having lights up and I like driving around, especially when you got kids, you know, but I don't need kids to enjoy it. Uh, you drive around town and find the houses that are, uh, you know, give you the oohs and the ahs <laughs> and all that. Uh, downtown, the squares, uh, uh, most places look pretty cool and all the lights and the trees and uh, decorations. It's just neat. I think this time of year is, is uh, special. You know, uh, the word the world uses a lot is magical. Of course, we don't believe in magic. We don't want anything to do with that. But I understand what's meant, uh, just that feel, you know, all the Hallmark movies. <laughs> 
<laughs> but anyway, I uh, haven't watched any of them, okay, uh, to this year. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I have always celebrated Christmas since I was, you know, little, so I don't know really what it's like not to celebrate it. Uh, but I've always associated it with the birth of Christ. Even whenever I was a little boy, before my parents even went to church, uh, anything, they taught us about uh, Santa Claus. I believe Sa I had, my faith was so strong in Santa Claus that when they told me that he wasn't real, I still wanted to believe so much that I continued to believe. <laughs> and I thought I saw him in the sky and all this kind of stuff. And I was just kind of telling myself, nope, it's, he's real. <laughs> all, right? all the movies tell me so. And so uh, for a little while, I did believe that. And then my parents, you know, realized some of the problems with teaching kids about Santa Claus. And then I, did, I never taught my kids, obviously, uh, about Santa Claus. But, uh, but even whenever I w did, I still thought it had something to do with worshiping Jesus. I didn't understand St. Nicholas and, and that story behind any of that. I didn't know why he brought presents. I didn't know why he had reindeer. I don't think anybody knows uh, why he has reindeer, but um, flying reindeer at that. <laughs> but uh, uh, but I always thought, you know, you ever have you ever seen a uh, Christmas display where you've got Santa Claus and he's taking his hat off and he's looking in the manger at baby Jesus? Like, that's the way I thought it was. I thought Santa was in on it. Like, he knew God and he knew Jesus. And, and uh, you know, I'm not saying that's right. <laughs> I just definitely don't want to teach my kids that. But uh, I never thought something other than, hey, this is the birth of Christ and this is a special time. I'm really shocked when I meet any kids that don't understand what Christmas is truly about. And there are a lot of them out there. So uh, in some parts of the world... Um, and it doesn't have that much to do with the message, but just bear with me. Some parts of the world, just talking about this time of year, okay? Uh, it's special worldwide, which is another cool thing about Christmas, is that pretty much all over the world, people are talking about Christ. Even those pagans, you know, they got to get mixed in it sometimes too, okay? Uh, but, uh, but, you know, all over the world, some places they don't even dwell, focus so much on Santa Claus, but they believe three wise men come and they deliver gifts to the children. And so they uh, even have like we bring, not we, but some people put their children on Santa's lap. In some parts of the world, there's like people dressed up as kings and they are the three wise men. I don't know why the Bible doesn't say kings, but I've talked about that before. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, you know, the, uh, worldwide, it's pretty cool that everybody is talking about Christ this time of year and baby Jesus and there's manger scenes and there's all that. And, uh, you know, I, I think it would be, I think it would be somewhat <sighs> sad if a Christian didn't celebrate Christmas, you know, quite honestly. Now, I, I would understand if they're like, oh, well, of course we worship Christ. And so we talk about his birth and all that. We just don't want anything to do with the holiday traditions and, and all that kind of stuff. But I feel like it would be sad because I think it's a special time of year. And one of the things, let's tie this in real quickly this is an, obviously a very important part of the message, but uh, let's tie this in real quickly with those pagan beliefs. You know, where do they come? Where do they come from? Well, this time of year, something's going on. It's getting darker. It's getting colder. You know, uh, uh, it's it's gloomy, and people are looking for a little joy. And so, what do they do? You know, they bring in some. Uh, some decorations, you know, everything else is turning brown, but they find some evergreens and they bring in some decorations to spruce things up and to smell good. And, and they bring lights, you know, and then, you know, they, they light the, the trees, which that's what we're going to talk about. Okay. Uh, a little bit. I'm not going to like get way into the history and everything too much, too deeply. Uh, I'm going to make an application from the Bible. Okay. That's what we're here to study the Bible. <clears throat> but there is something comforting this time of year. You know, to, to, to come in from the cold and to get in warm, you know, and if you didn't have heat, like, wouldn't it be nice to have a wood-burning stove or a fireplace to sit around? And, and, uh, and so you understand where a lot of those traditions come, because this time of year, darkness, gloom, cold, all those things, man, we want some joy. And so this time of year, we're looking for the joy, and then ho the holidays come around. Now, some people, it comes October 31st, or, you know, November 1st, I guess you say, and some people, nope, you can't do it till after Thanksgiving. Whatever the case, it's a good season whenever it gets here. <laughs> and, uh, uh, other than, uh, you know, getting all the boxes down from the attic and untangling all the lights, it's a, it's a great time. <laughs> time. 
Okay. So anyway, so I'm thinking about the lights and I'm thinking about what's important about it. every year. I think about that. And of course, um, the Bible uh, talks a lot about lights in reference to Jesus and light, the light of the world all the way back to Genesis. And then, uh, and then at the very end, the Bible says there's no sun for the Lord is the light. So all throughout the Bible, we see that God is the giver of light and he's life and he's light and, and uh, all that. So, <clears throat> so I think it's very important to consider. And as Christians who worship the Lord, here are some things I believe we can think about. And so I'd like to pose it this way. When you go about this Christmas year, this Christmas season, and you see the lights and you're like, oh, how pretty the lights are. Here are some things I want you to think about that will help us as Christians to make the focus on the Lord, which I don't think there's a problem here. I feel like everybody in here does that anyway, but, uh, but maybe this would just be an extra way to, to worship the Lord this Christmas season. Okay, so number one, when you see the Christmas lights, they should remind us of our Creator. Remind us of our Creator. Now go ahead and go to Genesis 1, but you don't have to stand. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, the very beginning of creation. It says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and morning were the first day. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided uh, the waters which were uh, under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And it goes on. We don't have to read all of that, but go ahead and skip to 14. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of uh, heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of, uh, of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And uh, set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth and rule over day and uh, over the night and divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good in the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Okay, so see that at the very beginning, God creates light. Now, some people have tried to call this a discrepancy because then in day four, he makes the stars and the, and the sun and the moon. And so, uh, of course, the moon doesn't doesn't produce light, but uh, those bodies in the heavens that create, that give us light. So people say like, well, I thought he created light on the first day and, and all those other things weren't here yet. Well, you know what? He created light. He created light, whatever, however he did that, whatever it looked like, he created light. But I will show you in a second here um, another way to look at that. And, uh, you know, I, I suppose, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that on another point, okay? But keep that in mind that in the very beginning in Genesis, like it's, it's about light and then all the way up to Revelation, you know, we see that He is the light. There's no need of the sun or anything like that for He is the light. I'm going to come back to that thought in a minute. But lights in the firmament and, uh, you know, when we look up there, now it's interesting when He says He created all those things and, he, and then He made the stars also as if it's a second, you know, secondary thought. But the stars are innumerable. Like you look up and they're just everywhere. Uh, they're beautiful. Now we live in the city. Um, I mean, you know, obviously it's not a big city, but we do live in the city. Uh, anywhere you're around a lot of lights, it's hard to actually look up and see how wonderful it is unless you're going camping or something and you get away and, uh, and there's not a lot of lights and you look up, man, it's amazing. And that's one of those times where uh, you just wish that, I mean, like if I, I, if, if, if I don't have my glasses or my prescriptions bad or something like that, I really miss out. <laughs> I wish I could see better. I wish I had like, like, uh, mag what do you call it? Uh, uh, telescopes, you know, for glasses that I could just look at the stars and see them better. Uh, but anyway, you know, when we look at those things, it is to 
give us, a, it's just to marvel at God's creation and His handiwork. And of course, it's, it's night, it's dark, and so you can't look around and see all of His beauty, but you can just look up into the heavens and you can see the beauty even at nighttime because it shines through with those lights. And actually, Psalm 9, 1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork. What did it say in Genesis 1? He put all the stars in the firmament. And as you look up into the sky... And past, you know, our atmosphere, you see uh, through that all the bright lights and the, and it shows His glory. It says the heavens declare the glory of God. Look at Psalm eight. You remember, uh, we just we're in Psalm nine now for our for our uh, weekly reading of the Psalms, but we just got done with Psalm eight, where verse three it says, "When I consider thy heavens." The work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? David's saying, hey, when I look up in the skies and I see the lights, I'm wondering, what is man? And it just causes me to worship God and say, who am I in this small, uh, you know, speck in the universe? Not even a speck. And, uh, and so, you know, it is amazing to think about all that God has has created. Now, when it comes to Christmas lights on the Christmas tree, where is the origin of that? I suppose there are differing stories out there, but most of them trace it back. Uh, not the first electric one that happened, you know, somebody apparently was a friend of Thomas Edison and he came up with the idea and so they, they lit them with electricity. But you know what, before that, the reason he even had that idea is because they were using candles. Now, I don't think that was very safe and I imagine there were a lot of house fires <laughs> back in the day. Uh, but apparently, they, I know all the sources say that it came from Germany, and there's a, at least a story or a legend out there that says that Martin Luther, uh, you know, was walking out in the forest one time, and he looked and he saw the stars kind of like shining in through the trees, and he thought it was beautiful. He wanted to take that home, and he wanted to, to recreate that. And so in the house, he took a tree, uh, which yeah, obviously they already had uh, trees to, they already brought trees in to some de degree, but to some extent. Uh, but then he decided to put candles on there to recreate that. But then the story goes that he also used that to demonstrate, you know, to give a lesson and to teach his kids about Jesus being the light and about the light. I don't know what all he taught. Uh, maybe, maybe he taught what I'm teaching right now. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, uh, you know, the first thing I want to mention are just those stars in the heavens. You know, and that's kind of what you look at when you see a lot, of, a lot of lights, you know, lighting up the tree, lighting up in a dark place at nighttime. The lights come on, and I think, man, that's beautiful, but nothing compares to God's handiwork and what He's created for us in the sky. So when you see Christmas lights, think about the stars and worship the Lord. Number two, <clears throat> They should remind us of our Savior, who the Bible says is the light in the darkness. Okay, They should remind us of Jesus Himself when we see, hey, it's lit up. I, I don't like, none of us like dark. I don't think anyone likes dark from the time that they're, they're little kids. Like you want uh, there to be light. You don't care too much about being in, in dark. It's scary, right? You go to a restaurant, yeah, you know the... Dim lights creates a nice little atmosphere, but you know what it also does? It hides dirt. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if the lights turned on bright, you'd probably be like, ew, gross. Uh, you know, you, you, light is nice because it exposes the dirt. Uh, it helps you know where you're going so you don't stumble uh, and all these things. Okay, now go to John 1. And let's, hopefully you kept in mind what I read in Gen Genesis 1 because we're not going to go back, but... I'm not saying this is exactly what was meant in Genesis 1, uh, but keep in your mind that God created light before He created the sun and all that. And of course, in Revelation, He's going to be the light. That We don't have any need of the sun and all that because uh, the Lord is the light. Well, look at John 1. It says, In the beginning was the Word, capital W. Of course, it's talking about Jesus. As the text makes it very clear. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Look at this verse. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. 
And the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came into his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believeth on his name. And so we see right there uh, that Jesus is the light of the world. And not only that, it says that he is light and he is life. Okay, that, that life was the light of men. That's an interesting concept. But if you think about it, like our conscience, our, 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 again, I'm not trying to say that that's what Genesis 1 is talking about, uh, but our consciousness is described as light and uh, enlightening, you know, uh, all these kind of words talk about like us being able to think and to, uh, to, to you know, be self-aware and all those kinds of things. We wouldn't have that if it weren't for the Lord. Of course, He is our life. Every man that comes into the world, it says, has that light. Now, obviously, at some point they reject it. They receive, they receive it not. And so, you know, it's up to us putting our trust in that whenever we hear the gospel uh, to be saved. But at the very beginning, we are given life. And it says that that life is the light of men. Now, of course, Jesus, um, and I'm not talking about the Father, right? Obviously, Jesus is God. Uh, but, but there's God, the Father, God, Son, God, the Holy Spirit. But Jesus is um, the creator of all things. Look at verse 3. It says, all things were, in John 1, verse 3, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And the, verses, the text is clearly talking about Jesus. And so it's saying that he created all things. And of course, Colossians 1, 16 says, for by him were all things created, uh, that, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether uh, they be thrones, dominions, or principalities, or powers, all things were created by Him and for Him. All right, so, uh, so you know, the, the Lord, uh, Jesus Christ, is from the beginning, you know, not just talking about the man, Jesus Christ, Son of Man, that was born of Mary, but I'm talking about the eternal uh, Son of God. You know, He was the creator of all things, the Word. And, uh, and, and so, therefore, He is the light. He is the, the life. And uh, all, you know, that would be saved need to come to Him. It says in verse 12, But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. And, of course, we understand all throughout the book of John, we see believe, believe, believe. I mean, it's the believes used. I don't remember how many times I looked it up. I mean, I preached on through John one time, looking at all the places where it talks about believe to some extent. And I remember there was at least over a hundred uh, that I came up with. So uh, John, which is kind of like a gospel tract. I mean, he's telling the gospel and he's saying like, here's why I wrote these things. So you'll believe in the name of the son of God and that you'll have life. And, uh, and so uh, you know, that, that's all throughout the book of John, that we need to believe in Him so we can have life. He says, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So, of course, we have to receive Him. But when you see Christmas lights, you know, don't get like, oh, commercialism. Oh, you know, the festive and all this bah humbug, you know. Uh, look, I don't, I don't think, I think I'm in good company here as far as what I'm saying, but it should be exciting, but don't let it be exciting because you're like, oh, this makes me feel so good, and I remember my childhood, and I remember this and that. No, no, no. Stop and recognize, like, well, Jesus is the light of the world. You know, Jesus is lighting up the darkness. And so, uh, and so these are uh, things about Christ that you can think about whenever you see that. Okay, so number one was they remind us of the Creator, okay, and the firmament declares, uh, His handiwork declares uh, the glory of God. Number two, make you think about Jesus, the light of the world, the light that's come into the darkness. And then number three, it should remind you of the joy that we have in Christ, okay? Uh, not just Christ Himself, which we should worship whether we, it brings us joy or not, 
But the reality is Jesus brings us joy and, and, and happiness and all those things come through him. Now, look at Proverbs 15 for a minute. And I, I have to admit that I, I'm probably using this out of context. I love the word the way that it's written, but I'll explain to you what I, what most people believe it's saying. And so I, I'm not, I don't want to pretend to uh, be correcting anybody, but uh, think about how this is written. Uh, Proverbs chapter 15 in verse 30. It says, the light of the eyes rejoiceth the heart, and a good report maketh the bones fat. You know, when I read that, the light of the eyes rejoiceth the heart, I was thinking like whenever the, you see the light, you see light, you see, you know, let's say you're out traveling and it's dark and you see light off in the distance. You're getting closer to that city like it brings joy. Uh, let's say, I mean, I've running uh, these different ultras that go into the night or sometimes my training runs have started at night and just when you're like wore out and you're tired and it's dark you're getting sick of the dark and sick of running into cobwebs if you're running in the summertime <laughs> just then the sun starts coming up and man it's revitalizing and man it's, it's a joy to see okay so anyway i read that and i thought well man that verse that's what I think about, you know, the, the light of the eyes bring rejoicing. Now, f f apparently, I mean, most people say, and I'm not just talking about other versions of the Bible, but, um, but even commentary and stuff, they say, like, it's referring to in the context. And if you look at the, the word, which, you know, I don't understand Greek, but uh, that it's probably talking about when somebody comes with good news and the, the light in their eye you know, uh, it's, it's like their countenance, a good countenance, you know, uh, is, is, brings you rejoicing. I don't know if that's true or not, but, uh, uh, but at the same time, I know what I'm saying is true, <laughs> that light does bring joy and bring happiness. And, and so that's not going to be hard for you to think about because of the fact that it's scientifically proven. You can go look this up yourself. Uh, there's tons of articles, tons of uh, research that's been done on this, but when you look at pretty lights, any lights pretty much, but when you look at lights and Christmas lights, definitely, it raises your dopamine level. Everybody knows what dopamine is, All right? Dopamine is kind of like a reward system in your, in your, in your body. You know what I mean? Like, a, uh, it, it gives you a little bit of a boost, of uh, uh, joy, you know, and, and happiness. And so lots of things that'll bring it. Eating chocolate brings a <laughs> dopamine, raises your dopamine. All right. Uh, believe it or not, why one, one is one of the reasons everybody's, uh, addicted to their cell phones. I mean, there's lots of reasons for it, I suppose, but, uh, a device or cell phone or whatever is because if you feel that vibration or you hear that ding or whatever, it literally, science shows you, it raises your dopamine level. Even if you're like, oh, I got a message, and then you're like, oh, it's spam. <laughs> you know, or, oh, it's a tax collector. <laughs> I don't know why I said tax collector. Uh, extended warranty on your car or something like that, you know. Uh, it's the ding and just the thought. There's excitement, right? And it raises your dopamine level. There's lots of things. When you run, uh, you know, it's not necessarily enjoyable at first, but at, eventually it it's like a reward system. It gives you a dopamine rush and it makes you feel better. Okay. And so dopamine is a real thing. Scientifically, that's what causes us to feel joy. And it's been proven that when you see lights, you feel joy. Okay. Now that makes you understand why you feel that feeling whenever the people, it's dark and people turn on the Christmas lights and you go to a park or something and it's all lit up and you're just like, ah, oh. I mean, it's actually, it's literally raising the dopamine level. And so, lights bring joy, whether or not that's what Proverbs 15:30 is saying. Uh, we know this for sure, that Jesus brings joy. And I like the verse that says, uh, of course, Jesus is called the morning star. And, uh, you know, the, the verse talks about joy coming in the morning. Uh, he's called the, uh, let's see, morning star or the day star, when the day star shines. And so, you know, one of the things that I always think about when I hear that is again, that idea of after the long night of darkness and it's cold and it's just eerie. And then that light starts to come up and it's just, it brings joy, right? So that's why Jesus is called that because we are in a dark world. This time of year is a perfect example of that. 
You know, it's gloomy, dark, cold. Uh, just, I mean, man, it snowed the other day and it would look pretty cool because we don't get to see snow a whole lot. So when you see it, it looks neat. You go out and play with it, uh, you know, make snowmen, play with the kids. It's, it's fun for this long. <laughs> it's like slushy and it's nasty and it's cold and uh, everything that comes with it. All right, this time of year can really be a drag. People literally, uh, obviously, we we are spoiled a little bit with a, with heaters and stuff like that, electricity. Uh, but obviously, civilization has historically worked all summer long to gather up stuff to get them through the winter, <laughs> and and you know. Uh, uh, to have all the food that's necessary. It's got to be canned and it's got to be prepared. And, and then they got plenty of wood so that they can keep the fire going. If they run out of wood, they're going to freeze to death. And, and historically, they'd have to work all year round to get through the winter because it's such a hard time. But isn't it great that every winter we can expect, hey, here's a little joy in the midst of this terrible time of the year, unless you live in Florida, Hawaii, or something like that. Uh, you know, a little bit of joy you have here is the Christmas season. And you're going to take your mind off the darkness, take your mind off the misery, and you're going to think about the Lord. Now, I know a lot of people get stressed out at Christmas thinking about presents and thinking about traveling and, and making sure you're visiting the family. And uh, there's lots of reasons people get stressed out at Christmas. But, hey, I want to encourage you. You know, let that go, and if you have those moments of stress, just say, wait a minute, what is this time of year all about? Look around at the Christmas lights and think, hey, that just reminds me of my creator, creator of the world. I mean, look up into the heavens. Who is, what is man that he's mindful of, of us? You know, uh, he's created all of the world. We're just like a tiny speck. He's got a purpose and a plan for us. Number two, reminds us of our Savior who came into this world to give us salvation give us light and give us life, not just life on this earth, but eternal life to live in heaven and be with Jesus uh, forever. And then finally, it reminds you of the joy because hopefully you will get joy by looking at him and by thinking about, hey, that's pretty, you know, that looks good. It's pleasant to look at. And that should remind you like, you know what, who really brings joy this time of year? Jesus brings joy. Okay. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for being our creator and our savior and our joy. And Lord, I do love this time of year. And, and of course, we can get wrapped up in traditions and celebrations and, and uh, parties and all this kind of stuff, Lord. But help us to remember when we do that, that the still the, uh, at the center of it all is you, Lord. This whole season, uh, you are are everything. And so I pray, Lord, that you help us uh, think about that as we go through this year and see lights going up, maybe put lights up ourselves, and remember uh, what it represents. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.